Hello, you wonderful human being. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. My blooming alley is exploding and I am so happy to be able to share with you what is going on here. It is not just this shelf. There are some that you can't see back there. <laughs> There's also something going on on the lower shelf. It is wonderful. However, as you can see, there might be a little bit of too much exposure on this clip, but the light is too dark for filming this time of day. Even though I've got bright sunshine, it just so happens that we are late afternoon and the angle of the sun is going to come full force into the camera and it darkens everything else around it. So a lot is going on. I would love to take my time and explain everything to you, including show you everything that is going on. Also the ones that cannot do not reside in my blooming alley. What I'm going to do is take everything out and put it on the east side so that we've got some space to enjoy all this beauty to the max. Now, while I do that, I'm also going to be showing some other blooms that have since been removed. They would still be in bloom if I hadn't cut their spikes off for the sake of the orchid, but I would love to include them because if I hadn't cut the spike, they would also feature in our October bloom extravaganza of 2022. So while I prepare the east side, these are the blooms that should also still be with us. I hope to see you on the east side.
now or never. So glad that you still stuck around. Thank you very, very much. Well, what I have here on the table, <laughs> we are ending my growing season with a bang. I will not be denied my October bloom extravaganza of 2022, and I'm saying it's now or never, even though it might rain a little bit. But I am using this overcast, wind-free day to bring you the October Bloom Extravaganza with all the blooms that I currently have available to me today. But you know what? Despite seeing what you're seeing on the table here today, oh, I have some more sheaths that are filling up. They just didn't make it on time. It has been a strange year for me. Some of my orchids on the table bloomed exactly the same time that I was filming this last year, the October Bloom Extravaganza of 2021 and others have not even matured their buds yet. So we still have a little bit of a bumper blooming coming up, but I'm not going to delay the video for those. What we see here today is what we get. Now, what exactly is on the table? Well, I have my Orchid Ninja Orchid there to the left, which is my Lady Chatterley. Yes, some blooms have dropped, but we still have one more bud to open, if I'm not mistaken. So we're still getting some grins and smiles every time we step into the blooming alley. And we have the gorgeous, gorgeous Procatavola Golden Peacock behind the Lady Chatterley, sparkling away with those blooms, super long lasting, not fragrant. Oh, by the way, Lady Chatterley at this point in time isn't fragrant either. She normally would have like a plastic Tupperware with sugar in it kind of fragrance, but we are somewhat late in the season. So wow, the fact that she's still blooming, that didn't happen last year. But Golden Peacock doesn't have a fragrance. And then behind Golden Peacock, I have my Bretonia Shelob crossed with Rinconia Marie L. And the spike is so long that it's actually taking up front row. I don't have a fragrance on that orchid either, but underneath, I have the amazing, amazing Neostylus Loose Sneery back in bloom, second spike. And yes, this one is kind of late in the season as well. So, you know, yin and yang. Some aren't and some are, which always amazes me how a grow season and influences of weather condition changes the bloom cycle of an orchid. I was not expecting a second spike on the main fan of my loose sneery. I thought it we were way late into the season, but lo and behold, here she is. And quelle surprise! <laughs> my first bud on my Zygopetalum trozy bloom to the right, open just in time. It looks a little bit squashed because there was a leaf pushing down on the sepal there, but I still have another bud to go. And oh my goodness, if I'm standing back here about two meters away from the table, <laughs> oh my goodness, the fragrance that is coming at me. The loose Sneeries fragrance of beautiful, beautiful citrusy sugar vanilla all day and somewhat into the night, no matter whether the sun is shining or not, because of the parent of the Falcata that is nocturnally fragrant. So she doesn't need sun to be able to smell nice. Um, to the right, Zygopetalum, so intense with that beautiful cinnamon spicy fragrance with a little hint of sugar. And while we're at it, let's go through the menu fragrance. <laughs> I'm so distracted. Peggy Ruth Carpenter to the right of the Zygopetalum has a steakhouse peppery fragrance. Yes, like a barbecue steaks, like something delicious off the grill that has freshly cracked pepper sprinkled over it. Ooh, yum. Now, speaking about the menu, sweet sugar rounds up all the palates from, you know, sweet, sour, tasty, <laughs> plasticky. But sweet sugar doesn't have a fragrance. That gorgeous little oncidium there on the right just looks very pretty and bright yellow. But when we move up a little bit, as we move further to the right, oh, Cattleya Maxima. Oh, even on a cloudy day, there is that summer garden perfume of roses in the air. It makes no difference whether the sun is shining or not. I can smell her from where I am stood. 
super welcome. Love me this orchid. So happy she's doing so well that she has her hot pink back because last year she didn't bloom hot pink. She was a little bit on the pale, for me, sickly looking pink color. Oh, but she's back. <laughs> oh, I love it. The blooms are holding out beautifully. She has already been in bloom for about three weeks now, just amazing. Then off to the right, we've got Big Blousy, the one that stands out because it's all lip in your face. The Chunya Good Life number one is like, mmm, pocket them lips, kiss me with those lips. <laughs> Look at the size of that lip. It is bigger than the bloom. It dwarfs the petals and sepals and it dwarfs the entire orchid. First time that I have three blooms on her. So yeah, I'm very, very pleased. She smells of plastic. Open a plastic bag. That's her fragrance. Oh well, can't have everything. But if we just scooch back a little bit more, there is a single, single precious bloom in this whole display. And that is a first time bloomer. She is an OG in my collection. And boy, she has tricked me many, many years in a row that I'm thinking that is a spike. It turns out that the sheath has a certain characteristic and you think it's a spike and it's not. But this year, <laughs> Lelia Amethyst graces the patio for the first time. And oh, she's gorgeous. One of her parents, being the cuculata that has very floppy, long petals and sepals, carried that distinct characteristic into her shape. So it's not like she's wilting, that's what she looks like, but it's so lovely that the trait of the long pointy funnel kind of lip that sort of drapes down like a waterfall is also still maintained in this hybrid. Gorgeous! I feel as though I should detect a fragrance there, but you know, if I'm gonna say floral, I would prefer to confirm that next year, keeping my fingers crossed that we do see her blooms again next year, and we are past the whole stage of seedling juvenile and have reached the full maturity now of a blooming size Lelia amethyst. So next year, I'll probably be able to tell you a little bit more, fingers crossed that we get to that point, and nothing happens between now and then. And the reason I'm saying I have to be a little bit careful with determining the fragrance of Lelia Amethyst is because of the next two whoppers <laughs> that clearly live in my blooming alley for the time being, one of them being Lelia perinii that's tucked a little bit behind there. Yup, I guess I need more staging utensils, but Lelia perinii, oh my goodness. Her fragrance isn't strong, and if it were strong, I wouldn't know, but where she lives in the blooming alley, it's the Cattleya maxima that dominates. Separate her out a little bit and go close to the bloom. There is also a beautiful rose fragrance. But again, it's not a heavy rose fragrance like the maxima has, but it is beautifully elegant. The blooms, since they've opened, they're already starting to go over. Another reason why it's now or never, but that's typical for Lelia perinii. You get a bloom lifespan of about 10, 11 days, and then it's going to happen very quickly that they look frazzled. And well, <laughs> see you back in the blooming alley in 11 and a half months, because yeah, that's what happens with Lelia perinii. She's there and then she's gone because no activity to the naked eye can be determined. <laughs> but can we just go up another floor, please? Oh, be still my heart. Catlia Dinard Blue Heaven. The insane beauty of these blooms knocks me out every single time I am in my blooming alley. Not just the fragrance, which is stronger than the Maxima. So with every little bit of a waft of a breeze, I have to make sure who am I smelling because interchangeably, I'm getting wafts of Cattleya Maxima and I'm getting wafts of the Dinar Blue Heaven. Oh, you guys, if I could just... Let me see if I can do this fragrance justice. We'll take the Rose Garden on a hot summer day fragrance from the Maxima and let's quadruple that. This year, I find it to be super strong, not invasive, not unappealing in the slightest. On the contrary, you just want to be there. You want to get closer. You want more of it. Even if it is strong while you're standing away from the orchid, it's like the fragrance is pulling you in. And I guess that's what pollinators would do. They're like, oh, yum, yes, I'm going to have me some of that. And well, for me, the human, 
same effect. I am telling you four times what the Maxima exudes. And it is for that reason I have them strategically placed in my blooming alley on two different shelves. They cannot be next to each other, otherwise I would not be able to appreciate the difference and the intensity of the two fragrances. I do not want them to mix. However, I do believe that this year the fragrance has quadrupled in intensity because I've got three blooms. That is a first, and well, my word. They even opened up beautifully. They are not crowding each other. It's a sight to behold. If the sun were shining, we would be seeing sparkles all over her. She radiates. However, on a cloudy day, we can also appreciate how three-dimensional she is on a two-dimensional screen. Now, the reason I've stepped her up a bit is because, well, she takes pride of place. She is my favorite orchid. There is a ninja clip about her on my channel giving you the reason why. The Maxima will always go with me no matter where I go. If plan B has to kick in, the Maxima will always go before the Dinard, should space be an issue. But the Dinard will come along without a doubt if there is space. I will link the ninja clip in the description, so if you want to have a look and see why I say the Dinard is my favorite, <sighs> that's why she's there in the middle. But right on top, not because of priority, but because this orchid does crown my collection for the past four months that she's been in bloom. Interchangeably, I say he or she, that is Dendrobium hibiki cannot be denied, needs to be on the pedestal, not just because the fact that the orchid is so stout, but she has served me super well the past four months with all my blooms for you dedications for all the people that have not been mentioned in a specific episode. Dendrobium hibiki delivers and makes it possible for me to give a nice cluster blooming as a thank you to anybody that watches my videos. So, pride of place, she deserves to be on top of the whole pyramid. And well, yes, it did kind of work out that honoring Hibiki for his service and the next space down is the one that I will never part with unless it decides to collapse on me one day. Goodness me, I hope not. I hope I didn't jinx anything, but you know how the orchid hobby goes. Having had the opportunity to put everything on the table here, there are some that I can't move. Can you believe it? But wait. There's more. <laughs> Classic line. We love that in an orchid hobby. But wait, there's more. Let's go and have a look at those. We were talking about a menu of fragrances. Okay, how about we finish off the theme of fragrances? We're not done with the blooms yet. <laughs> but the theme of tasty fragrances with a delightful lemon powder sugar sorbet. How about that? This is Brassavola flagellaris. And why am I whispering? <laughs> Sometimes when you get very close to a delicate bloom, I don't know about you, but my voice just goes down a notch. Oh, she is gorgeous. Very long lasting. And where she's positioned now, just to protect her from the angle of the sun, burning. <laughs> Oops, we got a little bit close there with the anthocyanin, but burning her leaves. The bloom facing, to me, standing behind the camera, also brings a beautiful nightly waft of that powder sugar lemon fragrance. It's gorgeous. And she has been open almost three weeks now, and it was the first time this year. I almost made it to having two blooms on this orchid at the same time, but we just missed the mark. But I hope that maybe in 2023, we will be able to appreciate a spectacle of maybe two, maybe three blooms open at the same time. Who knows? Time will tell. Ah, she's so gorgeous in her simplicity. But still, we're not done yet. Now, this one I could move, but that is only because the roots aren't growing into the iron grating, and I'm afraid of breaking the roots on the Brassavola flagellaris. But look at my Dendrobium Victoria Regina. She's blessed me with three buds. I am astounded. And from the section of this orchid that has the richest, deepest, saturated color of all of them. And I say it like that, just in case you don't know, this mount actually has three different pieces, even though I bought two Victoria Reginas. It just turns out that when they all bloom, there are three different kinds of blooms that are less saturated and have more white tips on the end. 
So I'm really pleased because out of the three, this deep, rich, saturated color, this is my favorite. And here we are. Who'd have thunk? October Bloom Extravaganza. I cannot believe it. This is an extra special treat. <laughs> Dun, 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 <laughs> That's a dead giveaway because to around this October Bloom Extravaganza off, I present you Sharky. <laughs> this is Dendrobium serratulavium, lovingly called Sharky in my collection just because of, well, that lip, you know, serratulavium, jaws, you know, all that fun stuff. Sharky. Very, very beautiful. And to my understanding, not in bloom last year. Now, the blooms that you can see here are easily and readily visible, but I have other clusters more hidden down below. So it's been one great little show to see these blooms in my collection. Please do not be confused by the background, but this dendrobium is on a community mount together with a dendrobium of film, obviously not in bloom, but tucked away behind the blooms is my ever-blooming Dendrobium Seraula. I'll be inserting pictures. Sharky being a little bit late in the season. It's the first time I'm seeing the two Dendrobiums actually bloom together, but I do love how they complement each other. Seraula has been in bloom since, oh, I don't know when. May, June, it is just a constant bloomer and bloomer and bloomer. And for a species, it's just insane that this orchid keeps on blooming. Unfortunately, it has something that I can't really work with and showcase too much because every time a little bit of water falls on the lip of the blooms, it washes the lip out. It's like a watercolor effect takes place, which is really sad because the blooms are absolutely gorgeous and I really want to feature them a lot more. But you know, when you do bloom dedications, you <laughs> it's always like you're trying to get the best blooms, the most perfect blooms, and Seraula doesn't quite provide that, but she is a joy for me throughout the months that she blooms, and they are actually longer and more extensive than Hibiki, if you can believe that. But Seratulavium to bless us with her presence this time of year. <laughs> Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And the abundance is insane. Taking the theme of Halloween into consideration, of course, this is a wonderful way to end this video. At least I hope that you agree with me and I hope that you stay to the end to see all the ongoings and blooming shenanigans here at Ninja Orchids. Patience is a virtue, keep it if you can. The rest I will let you fill in, but in the orchid hobby, it is the key. So I'm really pleased to bring you my October Bloom Extravaganza 2022. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.